and suddenly, Alpharius was amongst the killing tide, his attacks not following rhythm or pattern. One instant, he was in the front rank, the pale spear orbiting him, its blade a blur of blood and smoke as it cut through armor and limbs. The next, he was retreating and lashing out as the Huskars moved into the space. Then he was pressing close, hacking and stabbing like the butchers of the World Eaters, then piercing a throat with a thrust that was as light as a breath of wind. Dawn drove into the Linnaeans, red spattering his face, Storm's teeth shedding blood. Then with a suddenness that halted the shallow breath in Archimedes' throat, Alpharius' spear thrust up from the press of ranks. Its tip shimmered, self-reflection fading to mist, and Archimedes thought that the sound fled from his ears as it drove at his lord's chest. It was a beautiful strike. In all his years of war, Archimedes had never seen the like. Its simplicity like a line drawn by a master artisan on a bare parchment. It was death and ruin and silence without end. And Storm's teeth met the spear thrust, and reality shrieked. A sheet of silver sparks exploded from the point at which the two weapons met. Alpharius and Dawn stood before each other, and it was as though the universe made space for this meeting of brothers. I came here for you, Rogon, said Alpharius as he slid back spear spinning. Dawn was cutting again and again and each blow churned the air. This is about victory. True victory. A Linnaean stepped into Dawn's path. Storm's teeth cut up through the torso of the Terminator. Gut fluid and blood gushed out as the dead flesh and armor fell. The Linnaeans and Huskarls were a shrinking circle around the two Primarchs. Look at this. Look at what I have done here. This is not a war you can win your way, called Alpharius. Dawn stood before him, and the spear was suddenly still as his brother loomed above him, a sculpture of vengeance cast in gold. Dawn sliced downwards. Alpharius raised the spear. The weapons clashed, and suddenly the Alpha Legion Primarch was spinning close. Storm's teeth arcing past him harmlessly. But you are blind to what you are fighting. We are both fighting for the future, Rogal. Alpharius lunged. Dawn jerked aside, blink fast. The spear tip caught his shoulder and punched through the golden armor. Dawn staggered. I did this so you would understand, shouted Alpharius, so that you would see that you cannot win. I'm not here to kill you, brother. I'm not here for Horus. I'm here to give you victory. Dawn was astride in front of Archimus, blood bright and scattering as he wrenched free of Alpharius' spear. The Huskarls fell, their legs cut out beneath them as Alpharius spun wide, spear arcing low like a scythe through long grass. And now Dawn stood alone. Blood running down the goal of his armor. I know the enemy, said Alpharius. I know your weakness, and theirs. I know the truth. Dawn stepped forward, Storm's teeth slamming down, battering into the spear blade in a blaze of light. Alpharius slipped to the side, and Dawn turned the direction of his cut as it fell. But Alpharius was not where his movement should have taken him. He was behind Dawn's cut, the blade of his spear slicing down. I can give you victory, brother! Alpharius urged him again. Dawn swayed aside, and the spear blade skimmed his chest. Slivers of gold and silver feathers fell to the deck, and Alpharius was overextended, and Dawn was turning, his strength flowing into a wide lateral cut that would never land. It would never land, because in that instant, Archimus saw what was about to happen. Alpharius was not overextended. He was exactly where he needed to be to turn past Dawn's blow and make another, last, 
perfect thrust with his spear. Archimus felt his blood-drained body try to move faster, try to push itself across the few meters separating him from the Lord, whose life and service were the reason he did not fear. Dawn cut. Storm's teeth blurred. Alpharius swayed back, pivoting and sliding a hair's breadth past the screaming edge. Archimus lunged to his lord's side, his Sayak's blade reaching for the spear thrust even as it unfolded. His blade caught the haft of Alpharius' spear and the force of the connection kicked through his metal arm like the kiss of a lightning bolt. Archimus reeled back, staggering to the deck, and the spear struck home. It rammed through Dawn's armor and into the flesh and stopped. Dawn stood, unmoved, the spear embedded in his shoulder where he had stepped in to take the blow. His left hand was locked around the spear's haft. For an instant, the two Primarchs were an arm's reach apart, eye to eye. Brother, Alpharius began, and Dawn hacked Storm's teeth through Alpharius' arms above the wrists. Blood and sparks fell in the flash of gunfire. The world became a slow, sliding tableau of movement. Dawn's face, cold stone, marked with blood and strobing shadows as he pulled the spear from his shoulder. Alpharius staggering, lashing out with a kick. Another cut, scything from left to right. Storm's teeth ripping armor like parchment red gloss sheen on indigo blue, and a demigod falling. His torso an open cave of meat and bone, the only sound the growl of Storm's teeth and the clang as Alpharius struck the deck, and began to rise, strength defying the red ruin of his body. Dawn still had the spear in one hand. But victory, Alpharius gasped. Dawn rammed the spear through his brother's chest. The tip punched through the power plant on the back of Alpharius' armor. Alpharius' mouth opened, his eyes wide. A great wash of blood poured from beneath his teeth. Dawn held him on the spear, the two so close that it seemed almost an embrace. The air around them was blurring like a heat haze as the blood struck the floor. A high wail was rising with a coil of wind which circled the pair. Alpharius's mouth moved, forming words. Dawn was still for a second, his eyes blank and black in the carved stone of his face. Then he pushed Alpharius away. Snakes of light writhed through the air. The Primarch of the Alpha Legion staggered, mouth still moving. Rogal Dawn brought Storm's teeth around. The blade cut down through Alpharius's skull and then tore free in a spray of blood and a detonation of light. The last planet of the solar system turned in silence. Explosions flashed. Ships glittered like snow, falling through a winter night. Lives ended. They ended in small spaces with the air sucked away, in the roar of gunfire pouring through the passages, in the spinning blackness where the last sight given to them was the blink of explosions and the light of stars. And they ended in the heart of a moon with the blood of a being who had been more than human, but less than a god, pooling on a floor of cold iron. Rogal Dawn, Praetorian of Terror, looked down at the corpse of his brother. Around him, the world turned. Groups of warriors appeared in fresh flashes of teleportation light. They spread through the vault as the doors crashed open, and Kestros ran in and saw a sight that none would have believed. 
a moment that should have stopped the galaxy on its axis. A Primarch, dead at the hands of his brother, within sight of the world of their creation. But the solar system turned without pause, unknowing or uncaring.